So excited for this video guys and if you're new to my channel my name is JL Lafi and welcome. I just wanted to give you an overview of the menu that I planned out for my daughter's birthday. The theme was fairy tea party so that is why most of the food is finger foods. And feel free to take a screenshot if you are looking for birthday party inspiration. The first thing I'm going to be making is these fairy bite cookies. They were very simple and easy to make. And I made them a few days ahead of time and just put them in a container until we were ready for the party. They kept very well. In the second bowl that you see, I am going to be making the scones. I like to multitask in the kitchen, so as I add the flour to the fairy bite cookies, I will also add the flour for the scones and get those dry ingredients mixed up for that. I will put a link in the description box for all the recipes that were used in this video. And since we keep kosher in our house, all the ingredients are kosher as I am pointing out to you here. Here you will see me using my new bench scraper to slice the cookies into small pieces. I never knew what a useful kitchen utensil that a bench scraper is. Guys, it has changed my life and I love it and I use it so much. They are so versatile and not expensive. I think I paid less than $2 for this plastic one and I highly, highly recommend. Rather than turn on my full-size dairy oven, I am just going to be using my small toaster oven. It is dairy as well. Moving on to the cheese and herb scones, I am adding sugar to the flour that is already in the bowl as well as the rest of the dry ingredients and mixing that up thoroughly before I add in the butter, cheese and all the rest of the wet ingredients. This cheese that I am using is certified OUD and I buy these in a brick from Costco for $15.99. I actually messed up the order that I was supposed to add the cheese in. I was supposed to do the butter first and then the cheese, but by mistake I did the cheese first and then the butter, but it worked out fine. As I go to add in the eggs, I am first breaking them into a smaller container to inspect it for any blood spots. If I did see something, I would discard that egg and take a fresh one. My first pan of Fairy Bites has finished baking, so I am removing those from the oven. And look at these guys, they just look so cute. I know my kids are gonna love eating these. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my lungs give out. Sunshine in the day And I will leave my windows open So that I can hear the sound of people talking And the wind blowing in the trees Oh, I 
Guys, I burned my wrist. Like, burned it so bad. Look at this. Look at this. Can you see? Can you see that blister? Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and if no one noticed, just like skip this portion of the video because. Yeah. Maybe no one noticed, and I'm just making it worse by like drawing your attention to it but I just wanted to say I had a run in with some boiling water this is the result you saying hi nothing a little aloe vera can't handle right In honor of Tamara's birthday, we also prepared these little goodie treats for her school classmates. They consisted of this haolam string cheese that I purchased at the local kosher grocery store and these made good bars, uh, which I got from Costco. These are OU certified. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine. Four. Mommy, how do you get these cheese things? Um. We also affixed some small coins, some sadaka, to the goodie bags so all of Tamara's classmates could join her in giving charity in honor of her birthday. Oh, the darkness starts to fade, feels like things are gonna go my way. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. For the birthday cake, I am going to be using a 9 inch cake pan as well as my seven inch springform pan. I'm giving them a good grease with some coconut oil and lining them with parchment paper. I learned this little hack for cutting parchment paper in a circle that perfectly fits your cake pan and I will be demonstrating it here. You basically just fold your piece of parchment paper in half and in half and in half and you just keep repeating it and then you cut it to size using the pan itself as a measuring guide. I'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke ooh, ooh. And I will try to fix what has been broken And as you can see when you unfold it, it is in a perfect circle that fits right in the bottom of your pan. The cake recipe that I'm using is one that I found online and it is basically a chiffon cake where you have the main batter and then you whip up the egg whites till they're stiff and fold those in afterwards. Take this weight off my shoulders cause I know yesterday ain't coming back mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the past stay in the cold Now when I go to do the eggs, you'll see that I'm separating the whites from the yolk. The yolk is going to be added into the main batter while the whites are going to get whipped up. I will be whipping the egg whites first. Um, when you're whipping egg whites, it's important that your beaters are very clean. And I didn't want to have to wash them in between. So I'm just going to whip the egg whites and then use the same beaters to mix up the cake batter. This little sunbeam hand mixer was given to me by my beloved grandmother. It is really old. I don't know how old it is, but aside from a slight overheating problem, it still works quite well. I don't really know why, but I was always kind of intimidated by chiffon cakes. Um, they just, I didn't want to deflate the egg whites and I was afraid of things going wrong, but I've made them now for a few different occasions and so far they've all been palatable. What I like about them is that they can easily be made parve. Um, you don't have to use dairy milk and you can still get a very light and fluffy texture without having to use any dairy products. The 
As you can see when I'm done whipping the egg whites I'm simply setting aside the beaters and I will be using the same bowl and the same beaters. I don't even wash it in between. I'm just going to dump everything in and start mixing up the cake batter. Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light. Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly. Oh, and the darkness starts to fade. Feels like things are going to go my way. I'm going to let the sun shine in the day. Since my cake pans are two different sizes, I am simply eyeballing it. I try and get the level on the pan to be somewhat similar, and that's it. I, I didn't bother weighing it or anything like that. Hey, what is that baby? You gonna be my little bacon helper? Are you my little baking helper? Yes, you are. After the cake layers have cooled a bit, I remove the parchment paper and set them aside to cool completely. For these magic wands, guys, I did not have any recipe. I got some inspiration from online, um, but it's really just something that I came up with. Um, what I'm showing you here is a, this congealed chickpea water. <laughs> I know it sounds really weird and maybe gross, but I had come across this um, recipe for making vegan meringues um, out of aquafaba, which is basically bean water, chickpea water. And so that's what I'm using. And it's cool because you don't have to use eggs. We have no problem with eggs, but I wanted to see if this was wor would work. So it's pretty much just an experiment and I am super happy with how it turned out. <laughs> Now back to my cake. I actually used two different recipes of frosting for the cake layers. The first recipe is the one you see me doing here. It is simply cottage cheese that I'm blending, whipped cream, sugar, and vanilla. The second recipe is ermine frosting, which I will be making to do the piping around the edges of the cake. Um, both of these icing recipes are much less sweet than traditional frosting, which is why I like them so much. On a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies 
eyes when they sing and dance Oh, I wish it was me Every night When I close my eyes I see dividing up the frosting into two separate bowls now because I want to do it in two different colors. The base of the cake I want it to be purple and the butterfly layer is going to be white. So there I've got the first layer of frosting on and to make it easier for myself I'm going to be popping it in the freezer for about 15 or 20 minutes. This will allow the first layer to solidify it and make it much easier to do a nice second layer. Oh yes, and I do not have a cake stand. I simply flipped a plate upside down and that's what I'm using to make my cake on. For the butterfly layer, I am first leveling the cake and then cutting it in half into two half circles. I then turn them to face out as you can see and that forms sort of a rudimentary butterfly shape. I did print off this picture of a butterfly from online and I'm cutting it out to sort of give me an idea of what I should cut away to make it more of a butterfly shape. So. This was helpful and I would recommend doing it this way if you are like me and really lack art skills. <laughs> and then I cut each side in half, slice it in half to form the layers. And I'm using the leftover white icing that I had set aside to frost the butterfly layers. Once I have the first layer of frosting on the butterfly layer, I again pop it in the freezer. After 15 or 20 minutes, I remove it from the freezer and I proceed to apply the second layer of frosting on the butterfly layer. And then I'll put it back in the freezer again for maybe an hour or so while I make the other frosting to do the piping. So here I am making the ermine frosting and I really love this one as well because it is easy to make, simple, and I usually have all the ingredients on hand. I did do a whole video already on how exactly I make this frosting and you can find that on my channel. There's something about the way you make me feel inside I'm counting down the days till we fly away Heading to the sun, only you and me are I am 
going to be tinting the base now because I found when I try to add liquid food coloring at the end after I've whipped in the butter, it can sometimes curdle and separate from the frosting, so I like to tint the base instead. Since I'm here working in the kitchen anyways, I am going ahead to boil the eggs that I need for the butterfly tea sandwiches. Just like a lose control, play songs on the radio too loud. This could be magical. You can kind of see here the final color of the pink frosting that I'm using. It was this nice pale pink and I was very pleased with the result. calling it done I took the cake over here to the window I just wanted to show you guys kind of a better in better lighting what it actually looked like the colors so after my kids left for school on the day of her birthday I did all the decorating I did not go crazy with decorations or anything like that I'm not I'm not really that type of person so I simply changed the tablecloth and blew up a few balloons um, and some little streamer thingies um, hung those up around the house and it was nice. This plastic tablecloth that we use guys, it is not actually a tablecloth, it is a heavyweight painter's drop cloth, um, but it's a lifesaver when you have small children at the table. I bought this package of multicolored balloons at the dollar store. Also, I got this little inflatable number six balloon from the dollar store as well.
And if you're wondering what my children were doing the whole time, I was doing this. Look how smart she is. She wheels the baby's bassinet out here, gets the kitchen stool, puts it up against there, and then climbs in. <laughs> so she can play with the baby. Oh, not too cute to you guys. Should I just lay it out into my mouth? Ha ha! Ha ha! Oh, careful, don't spill it. Ha ha! You filled it so full. What are these? Mechaim. Napkins. Yom Hulad Sameach, Tamara. Yom Hulad Sameach.